Okay, boys and girls, welcome to part two of limits day one. In this video, we're going to look at the properties of limits. So let's go ahead and review the, some notes from the previous video. Why don't you pause this and do these four problems quickly? Um, they're not in your notes, so you just can do them on your own on a separate sheet of paper and come back when you have the answers. Okay, boys and girls, welcome back. Let's look at the answers to the following problems. If you have any questions about these or if you got something differently, I, I tried to write some of my steps down, but if you got something differently, different, uh, please feel free to ask me tomorrow or the next time we talk with one another. Okay, so the notes for this is on page 10 in your packet. And our objective is simply to use the properties of limits to find limits. So I know there's not much room for this. Okay, so what we wanna talk about is that the sum and the difference properties. So basically the sum and the different property says this, the sum of the limits is the limit of the sum. Or, the difference of the limits is the difference of the sum. So basically, what you have is if you're adding two or subtracting two functions together, you can break them up into two separate functions, find the limits individually, add those limits together, and that would be the same as if you just found the limit. So let me just give you a quick example. So if we have the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared plus 2x, we can break that up and say that's the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared plus the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x. Find the limits individually. So the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared is 9. The limit as x approaches 3 of 2x is 6. So therefore, your complete answer is 15. The sum of the limits is the limits of the sum. Next, we have the product rule. And the product rule says the limit of a product, two functions multiplied together, is equal to the limit of f of x times the limit of g of x. So once again, what does that mean? It simply means if we were multiplying two functions together, let's say x times e to the x, we can break this up into two functions and find the limit as x approaches 3 of x, and then multiply that times the limit as x approaches 3 of e to the x, and what we would get would be 3 times e to the 3, or 3e e to the 3rd. So I'm just showing you that you can multiply the functions together and get the same result. Scalar property says that if k times f of x, if f of x is being multiplied by a scalar, we can factor out that scalar, find the limit, and then multiply by the scalar at the end. So the limit at x approaches 3 of 5x squared, I can remove the 5x squared outside before the limit, find the limit simply of x squared, which would be 9, and then multiply that 9 times 5. And then the quotient rule just says I can divide, if I'm dividing two functions, I can find the limit of the numerator, find the limit, the, li the limit of the denominator, and then divide it to two as long as the limit of g of x is not equal to zero. So if I have x squared over cosine x, and I'm taking the limit as x approaches three, that's the limit as x approaches three of cosine x, over the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared, which would give us 9 over cosine 3. And finally, if I raise a function to the nth power, I can take the limit of that function and then raise that limit to the nth power. So if I have x squared plus 2x raised to the 1 half, I can take the limit of x squared plus 2x as it approaches 3, and then take that entire limit and raise it to the 1 half. 
So in this case, as x plus 3, I get 9 plus 6, which is 15. So I would have 15 and 1 half, which also could be written as the square root of 15. So let's practice this. On your page, you have four problems. I've given you the limits of f of x and the limit of g of x is listed. Pause the video and complete the next four problems. Okay, welcome back and here are your answers. I tried to show my work, but if you have any questions on these, remember you can ask me tomorrow in class. Now, these may seem really simple, Okay, so let's look at some more problems where we're going to have to use the properties of um, limits. But also, we're probably going to have to use some properties of trig as well. So let's start with this first problem. We have the limit as x approaches 0 of tan x over x. And again, these problems are found on page 10 of your notes. So if we do a direct substitution, re recall that the tangent of 0 is 0. And then, of course, you have zero on the bottom, so you have zero over zero, it's indeterminate. So what can we do? There's no factoring, we can't factor that, but we can use a property of trig to solve this problem. Let us recall that tan x is equal to sine x over cosine x. So this can be rewritten as the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over cosine x over x. And just like we did in the previous problem, we can multiply by the reciprocal um, of x. So when we multiply by the reciprocal of x, we get the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over cosine x times 1 over x. Does anyone see how this could help us? Well, we can write this as the limit um, using just um, basic algebra properties. We can write this as sine x over x times 1 over cosine x. So what is that? I think that's the commutative property of multiplication. We can write that as sine x over x times 1 over cosine x. Well, now we can break this up using the properties that we just learned, and we have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x times the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine x. Now, we know that the limit of sine x over x is 1. So this would be 1 times Doing a direct substitution here, we get 1 over cosine x. 1 over cosine of 0 is 1. So 1 times 1, our answer is 1. OK, let's try another one. Um, this one has the sine of 4x over x. Now, what I need to tell you about this is that this property, sine x over x, we can rewrite this property to say, that it represents any, as long as this, these two values are the same, we're good. So like if I had the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of, I don't know, um, 27x over 27x, as long as these two are the same, the answer is 1. Okay, so it doesn't have to be just x. It has to be just the same thing. So, again, if we do a direct substitution, we get 0 because the sine of 0 is 1 and then 0 over 1. But if there were a 4 here, that would take care of all my problems, right? Well, I can't just willy-nilly put a 4. But what I can do is I can multiply by 4 over 4. So I can write this as the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 over 4, which is just 1 times four, sine 4x over x. 
So how does that help me? Well, now um, I know that I can rewrite this using the properties, uh, the commutative properties of multiplication. I can write this as sine. I can bring out a four because I'm using the property of a scalar multiplication. So I'm bringing out that four, bringing it to the outside. And now I have sine four X over four times X, which is four X. So now that both of these are the same, that answer is just one. So this would be four times one, which of course is just four. Okay, we have the limit of as x approaches zero of tan squared over x over x. So once again, doing the direct substitution, we get um, zero over zero. So what do I do with that? So now let's um, rewrite this again. So now I have the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over cosine x times sine x over cosine x all over x. So rewriting this as we did before, this becomes the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x times one over cosine x times sine x over sine x over cosine x. So I'm just rewriting this using algebra. So if I take the limit of each of these separately, I have the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x times the limit as x approaches zero of one over cosine x times the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over cosine x. And I can take each of these limits individually. This limit is going to be one. This limit is one. And this limit is zero. So I end up with one times one times zero, which is zero. Okay, I'm gonna give you, pause the video and see if you can't figure this one out. Remember this is sine x times one minus cosine x over two x squared. So pause the video and see what you come up with. Okay, welcome back. Um, hopefully that you saw that we can rewrite this as um, the limit as x approaches zero, just using some basic algebra here, we can write this as sine x over x times one minus cosine x over x times, and I can bring out that constant of one half, I can bring that out into the very front. Okay, so, and that would be times the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine x. All right, so we know that this limit is one, this limit is zero, so once again, we have one half times one times zero, which is still zero. The last one, okay, take a few minutes and try this one on your own and come back. Okay, this one is similar to the one that we did before. So we're gonna rewrite this as the limit, the limit, as x approaches zero of, uh, let's say one over, well, I'm gonna put the one over four on the outside of sine seven x over x. Now, in order for this to be one, I need this to be seven, but I can't willy nilly 
just make that seven. So I have to multiply by seven over seven. So I have seven times one fourth the limit as x approaches zero of sine seven x over seven x. Now this is one, so my answer is simply seven over four. Okay? And I just, those are the answers again, if you wanna see them again, all at one place, all in one place. All right, so let's recap what we've learned over the last two videos. We've learned that we can solve a limit algebraic, numerically, and graphically. We've learned that we can use the properties of limits to find limits of trig, trig and other functions. And you learned that you are really going to love calculus this semester, right? So that's what we've learned. And our homework is to work on your Delta Math Summer Assignment. There are additional practice for this in your book that we will go over um, the next time I see you in class, or if you want to begin on those extra homework problems, you can do that now and formulate any questions that you have. Remember, as you go through the notes, if there were any questions, you want to highlight those so you can ask those questions when we see each other in the classroom. Um, if you want to give me a heads up and send me a message through Remind, there was anything in particular that you, you felt uh, you felt was really difficult, just send it to me in a remind and I'll be sure to make sure to do examples like that on the next time I see you. Have an amazing day.